Hello, good morning. I am Amnish Jain. Welcome to the Debt Market Outlook from Kenner Vico. As usual, let's start with the global happenings. Geopolitics again came at the forefront when Israel attacked Hezbollah in Lebanon. This is the second front the Israeli army has opened after uh, taking war to Hamas in the Gaza Strip. In response, Iran fired almost 100 missiles on Israel, which were taken out by the Israeli defense systems. But this is the first time in the war in last one year that Iran has responded uh, directly rather than through proxies like the Hezbollah. The war continues and it is likely to have a longer impact on global economy. Oil prices rose as a shock of this war in the last one week. Oil prices which have dropped to $70, the Brent oil prices have climbed back to $80 per barrel. Also because of China stimulus, the oil prices were already rising, so it's a double impact. Globally, markets reacted negatively to this event because now it seems that this event which was uh, till now only in the Middle East seemed to be spreading out to other areas and Iran was getting directly involved in the war. The Western countries are working hard to ensure that it does not get out of hand but we have to wait and see how this thing evolves over the next few months and markets will remain wary of any escalation in the Middle East area. Globally, macroeconomic data remains good but it has been lately overshadowed by the Middle East war. The US Fed finally delivered a 50 basis jumbo rate cut in September as expectations were building up for further rate cuts in the rest of the year. However, the recent data on labor points to again a different kind of picture where US economy continues to show good uh, robustness and the US Fed may be tempering the next rate cut to about 25 basis points. Globally, other central banks have also cut rates but have paused after one or two rate cuts like the ECB and the Bank of England. Japan continued raise rates initially but now has indicated that they will probably not raise rates further. This led to strengthening of the dollar against other major currencies like the Euro, Pound and the Japanese Yen. Inflation in US is still going down. So last inflation number, uh, the core PCE number which the US Fed looks at is 2.2% which is very close to their goal of 2%. From that angle, the US Fed is expected to continue to cut rates, but the pace of rate cuts will be dependent on incoming data. As elucidated earlier, the US labor market is again showing strengthening signs and the US Fed may go slow on rate cuts, though the base case is that 50 basis more rate cut in 2024. Coming to India, Indian markets continue to follow global debt markets. US yields had fallen to 3.60 uh, in September and now have risen to about 4% because of the volatility. Our yields also fell in lockstep with US yields, touching 6.70%. But as we have been mostly following the global data, our yields also responded to the reversal of global yields. In terms of RBI, RBI governor has long been trying to dissociate the RBI MPC actions or the Monetary Policy Committee actions from the US Federal Reserve moves. RBI governor in lots of media interviews and interaction has indicated that rate cut is not on the anvil as inflation is still not on a durable basis near 4%. While inflation in the two last readings was 3.5% on an average, it will go up slightly to around 4.5% in the next few readings, which will dissuade RBI from cutting rates. Though the GDP number for first quarter of FY25 was around 6.7% against expectation of 7.2%, still it is on the very good side. Inflation forecast unlikely to change and should remain at 4.5% for FY25. In this regard, the rate cut cycle is likely to be limited from RBI side. We do expect a 25 basis rate cut probably in December 24 as Fed would have likely cut rates by another 50 basis point by then, moving the rates from 5.5% in US to 4.5%. From external sector perspective and currency appreciation depreciation perspective, RBI may need to follow global trend in that regard. 
Markets, like I said, have been volatile. While last two three months rates have gradually gone down from about seven percent to six seventy, they remain volatile and follow global trends. Short end of the curve is on the higher side, and that remains our favorite trade. We believe that while the long end curve uh, may take longer time to go down, especially since the rate cut cycle gets delayed from RBI side. The short end of the curve may benefit if RBI shifts to neutral in this policy and a rate cut happens in December. We expect funds like ultra short term fund, low duration fund and the short duration fund benefit from this move. The one year corporate bond yield is highest in the yield curve. So that really provides good opportunity for investors to invest for the short term and take advantage as and when RBI cut rates. It may take time, it's a question of timing, not of when. It is probably next 6 to 8 months we may see RBI cutting rates by 25 to 50 basis point. As usual, investors should look at their risk return profile for investing and also look at their investment horizon while investing in debt funds. Thank you. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.